In April of 2023, 31-year-old Kendra Nance tore through a Chicago, Illinois gas station in her boyfriend's SUV, nearly crushing him and hitting a few other cars before blowing through a nearby intersection and flipping the vehicle. The two were reportedly having an argument in the vehicle with the boyfriend behind the wheel when they pulled into the gas station. The incident ended with the SUV sitting on its roof on the other side of an adjacent intersection and Nance walking out seemingly unharmed. When the pair pulled in, Nance and her boyfriend's quarrel apparently spilled out into aggression with other customers. Somebody began recording when a woman approached Nance, apparently angry about her vehicle almost being hit. At that point, Nance decided to floor it, leaving her boyfriend dangling from the door and dodging tires while she plowed through one vehicle, pushing it away from the pump it was hooked up to. The boyfriend dropped to safety just after the collision. Nance, meanwhile, headed for the nearby intersection. The camera turns away briefly, but a crash can be heard. When the camera goes back to the SUV, it's on its roof with Nance standing outside of it. She approaches the station again to continue fighting with the other customers, and at some point, her boyfriend had gotten physical with one of them. Authorities eventually showed up and hauled away both Nance and her boyfriend. They were treated for injuries at a nearby hospital. Nance, who already had a long criminal history and no license, caught a bevy of charges, including felony property damage and reckless driving. She had court dates in April and May of that year. It is unclear what became of Nance or what charges her boyfriend got and how he feared. Number 8. Iana Rollins vs. Chad Weaver On July the 18th of 2022, a police sergeant with the local sheriff's office in Volusia County, Florida went to the wrong street while responding to a home burglary alarm call and ended up arresting 19-year-old Iana Rollins, a teen who was innocently pulling out of her driveway. When the encounter went completely off the rails, Rollings had been leaving the house that the sergeant, Chad Weaver, thought he was supposed to respond to. He ordered her to stop the car, and she did. But when the confrontation became up close and personal, she got aggressive with the officer and eventually became physical with not only Weaver, but others who were called in as backup. After the initial encounter, Rollings was jailed and got out the next day on a $15,000 bond. When the initial court hearing happened, her lawyer moved to dismiss, asserting that the officer had detained an innocent person and thus had violated her constitutional rights. Weaver and his people, on the other hand, argued that she still committed assault on multiple officers regardless of the circumstances that started the encounter. The judge agreed and she was charged with two counts of resisting an officer with violence, along with two counts of battery on a law enforcement officer, Rollings, who notably lacked any criminal history until the incident was left, facing four felony charges amid public suspicions of corruption. Among officials and the jury, the prosecution initially refused to offer a plea deal, meaning that the accused could face up to 20 years in state prison. A plea deal was eventually struck, according to an update stemming from a court hearing in November of 2023, but details on what that deal entailed were unavailable. Weaver, meanwhile, remains on the force. Number 7. Marisol Wentling On December the 16th of 2023, 19-year-old Marisol Wentling was captured on video doing donuts in a parking lot in Colorado Springs when her SUV flipped over, severely injuring her five passengers, some of whom were hanging out the vehicle's window when it happened. In the video, the red SUV could be seen spinning around the parking lot when the driver abruptly loses control the vehicle ended up flipping over onto its roof, then onto its side, appearing to pin one of the passengers to the ground. Bystanders rushed to help, and all five riding with Wentling 
were rushed to a nearby hospital with critical injuries. Wentling was brought in by local authorities and charged with vehicular assault. According to an updated report, three of the victims have since been treated and reached stable condition, with two of them eventually being able to go home from the hospital. Two remained in critical condition as of the latest updates. Additionally, Wendling's charges could potentially be changed depending on whether the remaining two survive. As such, all signs point to the case being ongoing. Number 6. Lila Hamoud vs. Cynthia Villa Gomez In December of 2022, a 20-year-old student at Winston-Salem State University named Lila Hamoud was taken out of class in handcuffs after arguing with her professor over details of a writing assignment and eventually charged with disorderly conduct. The altercation reportedly took root when the professor, Cynthia Villa Gomez, contacted her just hours before the cut-off time for an important group project, suggesting some changes. Hamoud showed up in class the next day and began talking with her group about the assignment when Villa Gomez confronted her. The two argued, and when Villa Gomez decided that her attempts at de-escalation had failed, she called in campus police and had Hamoud removed. The incident was recorded by multiple classmates, resulted in mass attention online and around campus. Students united not long after to stage a protest, while the school's head, Elwood Robinson, penned a letter to students and staff defending the move. According to Robinson's letter, there were attempts to maintain diplomacy, but the situation ultimately grew so out of hand that there was no choice. One student that was interviewed after witnessing the argument and subsequent arrest noted that nobody got physical and that Hamoud remained in her seat until police arrived. The student reported that the officers manhandled the young student continuing to restrain and push her after she repeatedly said that they were hurting her. In the video, Hamoud asserts that the professor called in campus police because she refused to apologize over the row and her behavior. As of the latest available updates, Via Gomez is still employed despite calls for her firing and Hamoud had her day in court that was scheduled for January of 2023. Number 5. Maria Guadalupe vs. Volaris On July the 4th of 2023, 56-year-old Maria Guadalupe threw a tantrum of epic proportions at Mexico's Benito Juarez International Airport when attempting to get a refund on a plane ticket went wrong. The altercation stemmed from a flight reservation issue with the Volaris airline leading to a violent outburst by Guadalupe at the ticket counter. She reportedly attempted to purchase her flight using multiple credit cards, triggering a fraud alert due to payment failures. Guadalupe's aggressive reaction escalated when she was asked to complete the purchase or seek a refund from the agency. She insisted on getting the refund directly from the airline, but the attendant was unable to do so for her because the reservation, as well as her payment record, were not in the airline's systems whatsoever. She proceeded to damage airport equipment, including slamming computer monitors and barcode scanners to the ground in a fit of rage. Bystanders caught the fit on video, wherein Guadalupe can be heard telling one of the airline agents, if you don't want to give me my money back, I don't give a f but that's going to cost you. Auxiliary police agents intervened, placing Guadalupe in custody as she tried to leave the airport and a reparation agreement was reached for the damages caused. Volaris described the incident as erratic and unfortunate and that all applicable security protocols were followed. Number 4. Gregory Bombard vs. Jay Riggin In December of 2023, the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression publicized 
the case of a man who had been arrested in February of 2018 for disorderly conduct, consistent of shouting expletives at a cop and flipping him the bird. Gregory Bombard was driving in St. Albans, Vermont, when he was pulled over by state trooper Jay Riggin. Riggin was heated under the impression that Lombard had flipped him the finger. He went on to explain that the gesture seemed unusual to him, as though the man were trying to get his attention. So he pulled him over to make sure everything was okay, despite the gesture itself being protected under the first constitutional amendment's right to free speech. Bombard challenged the officer's assertion and demonstrated that the cop was mistaken. The motion he made wasn't caught on the camera, but it's implied that it had something to do with the cigarette that he had been enjoying. When Riggan's temper boiled, he ended the encounter, wished Bombard a good day and headed back to his cruiser. It was at this point that Bombard, rather than going about the rest of his day, actually did flip the officer off, peppering him with a few choice words. At this point, Reagan radio dispatch to let them know he was going to arrest Lombard for disorderly conduct. And that's exactly what he did in a case that dragged on for a year at significant cost to the citizen. All charges were eventually dropped, even after being dropped once before them being brought back up. A lawsuit that he filed in 2021 had not seen much traction, but the local chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union was backing him up. At this time, legal proceedings are ongoing. Number 3. Jay Riggan vs. Humphrey Maguire In October of 2021, 19-year-old Ramon Vasquez of Fort Bend County, Texas, was T-boned by another driver, then immediately burst out of his damaged car and fired six rounds at the driver who had hit him. He then got back to his car without a word and sped off. 20-year-old Humphrey Maguire was flown to a nearby hospital but later succumbed to his injuries. The encounter was caught on video thanks to a doorbell cam installed on a nearby home facing the intersection. Vasquez was later found by authorities and brought in on murder charges. He was indicted by a grand jury in January of 2022 and given a $500,000 bond as of the latest updates. The shooter is in jail awaiting his trial. Number 2. Corey Lynn Ralston In September of 2022, 18-year-old Corey Lynn Ralston of Claremont, Florida, had an argument with her uncle that ended with her stabbing him. The victim, whose name was not released, went to a local emergency room telling the staff that he had been stabbed, then left without being treated. This prompted the staff to tip off local authorities, who arrived at the victim's home to find him in bad shape, insisting he only needed rest. It was discovered that he had a deep stab wound that was still bleeding and he was subsequently transported to Orlando Regional Medical Center. The different parties present gave three different stories to the authorities. The victim himself wouldn't speak about the incident, but his mother said that he had accidentally dropped a knife on himself. She later said that she heard a commotion, what sounded like a kitchen knife being thrown, and found her bleeding son in the kitchen with Ralston. She noted that she hadn't seen the assault occur and didn't know exactly how everything had gone down. Ralston herself said that she had tripped over her sleeping uncle, then argued with him. The two exchanged water sprays from the kitchen sink. Then Ralston grabbed a knife and started waving it menacingly. She attested that she could have accidentally hit him during this time. Medical staff found that the victim's wound was deep enough that his liver had been damaged, an injury that would have required serious force behind the knife. Thus, Ralston was arrested and charged with assault with a deadly weapon. She was released on a $10,000 bond.
Stick around after number one if you have not yet seen our release about when video calls go wrong. That's coming up right after. Number one, Darkus Coley and Abriel Baldwin versus Demarcus Coley. On December the 24th of 2023, a mother of two in Largo, Florida, lost her life and the lives of two teenage siblings were ruined in one fell swoop. On an otherwise peaceful Christmas Eve, 14-year-old Demarcus Coley was engaged in an argument with his brother, 15-year-old Darkus. The younger boy pulled out a gun, which authorities believe he stole from a car, and was swiftly kicked out of the house by older relatives. His sister, 23-year-old Abriel Baldwin, went outside to talk some sense into her little brother with a 10-month-old baby slung across her chest in a holder. He shot her dead, putting a bullet in her chest. Inches from the baby, Darkus heard the shot and in turn shot his brother. Darkus fled the scene, tossing his gun as he went. Authorities couldn't find the gun, but they did eventually find him with a relative in nearby Clearwater. Demarcus, meanwhile, was treated for and survived his gunshot wound. Abriel was not so lucky, leaving her six-year-old and ten-month-old children without a mother. Darkus was physically okay but mentally scarred, with authorities choosing to institutionalize him for the time being due to talk of self-harm. Demarcus has been charged with first-degree murder and child abuse, although the baby he almost hit was thankfully unharmed. Darkus, meanwhile, has been charged with attempted murder. Local authorities are debating whether to charge the pair as adults. Recent press releases indicate the case is ongoing, with Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gautieri expressing frustration with gun crimes committed by teenagers who steal weapons mostly from unlocked cars. Yale Gerstein, a 19-year-old college student from Austin, Texas, was on a video call with his girlfriend, Bailey Luciani, on October the 23rd of 2016 when he heard a knock on his apartment door. He went to open it, at which point three armed men burst into his home and started striking him repeatedly. Luciani, who was in Dallas at the time, witnessed her boyfriend being held at gunpoint, saw the attackers as they were pistol whipping him and heard them threatening to shoot him. While one of the men was holding Gerstein down on his bed, the other two went through his apartment, searching for valuables to steal. As the home invasion unfolded, Luciani asked her father to call 911, while she took screenshots of the video call to show the police, hoping they'd thus be able to identify her boyfriend's attackers. Eventually, one of the robbers unplugged the computer and the call ended abruptly. Gerstein later told a media outlet that one of the intruders then stomped on his head and threatened to kill him if he followed them before leaving with thousands of dollars worth of music equipment. The team recalled I was scared because they were saying, I'm going to blow your head off. Gerstein then watched the robbers flee to the apartment building across the street and drive off in a white Crown Victoria that resembled a police patrol car. Days later, Austin police issued a warrant for the arrest of two teenage suspects, Michael Aylman Jr. and Jacob Carter, believed to have been involved in the robbery. Reports of the incident had been broadcasted through various media outlets along with Luciani's screenshots and Carter's mother contacted the authorities after she'd recognized her son as being one of the attackers. The identity of the third suspect wasn't revealed. Number 6. Sergio Sante 34-year-old Sergio Sante was heading home down Bonnie Bray Street in downtown Los Angeles, California on the afternoon of April the 8th of 2022. He was on a video call with his brother Douglas, telling him about the plans he had for the upcoming weekend. While he was only three blocks from his home, without warning or provocation, a man wearing a black fisherman hat charged him with a knife and plunged the blade into his neck before running away. The attacker then stabbed two other people and fled the scene. Sante made it around the corner to a storefront and he was rushed to a local hospital. The other two victims hadn't suffered life-threatening injuries, but Sante could not be saved. Police launched a manhunt across Los Angeles, warning citizens the attacker was armed and dangerous. 
On April the 22nd, detectives located 43-year-old Anthony Madison in Boyle Heights and arrested him in connection to the brutal attack. He was charged by the district attorney's office with one count of murder and two counts of attempted murder. Number five, Fetty Wap. Rapper Willie Jr. Maxwell II, better known by his stage name, Fetty Wap, was taken into custody in the fall of 2021 after the authorities had determined he was a kilo-level drug dealer on Long Island and in New Jersey. At the time of the arrest, the FBI seized about $1.5 million in cash, along with stacks of pressed cocaine and bags of heroin and fentanyl. Maxwell and five others, including a New Jersey correctional officer, were reported to have been part of a multi-million dollar bi-coastal drug trafficking operation. The group would reportedly buy the drugs in California and transport them in vehicles with hidden compartments across the country. Maxwell was taken into custody while at the Rolling Loud Festival at City Field in Flushing, Queens, and later released on a personal recognizance bond of $500,000. A little over a month from his release, Maxwell violated his bail conditions by threatening a man during a FaceTime call. According to an affidavit filed in August of 2022, the rapper brandished a gun during the call and repeatedly told the other man, only identified as John Doe in the document, I'm going to kill you. The latter had accused Maxwell of being a police informant. Prosecutors released an image of their interaction and the rapper was arrested in August for breaching one of the conditions of his bail that stated he must not possess a firearm, destructive device, or other weapon. Maxwell's double life as a drug dealer furthered his income as a successful recording artist. He'd collaborated with other big names in the music industry like Drake or Nicki Minaj, and in 2015, he became the first rapper to have three top 20 songs on Billboard since Eminem in 2013. Number four. Lauren Juma. On April the 29th of 2022, Van Brisbane and Lauren Juma, his girlfriend's teenage daughter, were alone at the home they shared in Humble, Texas. Juma's mother, Laurie Young, was away on a work trip at the time at around 1 a.m. The teenager, a student and cheerleader at Nimitz High School video called her mother and her older sister, Kerika Harmon, to tell them that 60-year-old Brisbane was being really weird. She wanted her mother to ask the man to leave her room as she'd woken up to see him standing there in the dark. Young tried telling her boyfriend of five years to stop pestering the teen on the call, but he wouldn't budge. 19-year-old Harmon then agreed to come to the house to help her get out. Upon reaching the address, however, she found that Brisbane was holding Juma captive inside the home. In the meantime, while still on the call with her mother, the teenager screamed, he has a gun, before abruptly hanging up. Young immediately called the police. When Harris County Sheriff's deputies arrived at the scene, minutes later, they heard two gunshots as they were approaching the property. Brisbane then came out of the front door, pulling and adjusting his pants. Deputies took him into custody and charged him with murder. After finding Juma's lifeless body inside the house with her clothes in disarray, prosecutors asked for a test to be performed on the victim to determine if she'd been assaulted. Brisbane's initial bond was set at $1 million, but after the judge heard graphic details found by investigators at the scene, the bond was raised to $2 million. Brisbane, whose motives for the killing remained unclear, faced capital murder charges if test results indicated the victim had been abused before being shot dead. The punishment under Texas law was life without parole or the death sentence. Brisbane also had a record of previous criminal charges in the Phoenix and Chicago areas. Number three, FaceTime driver. In March of 2018, a woman was filmed having a FaceTime conversation while driving her gray Honda at over 60 miles per hour down the Mitchell Freeway in Perth, Western Australia. Footage of her resting the phone on the steering wheel in front of her face was recorded by a passenger in a passing car. The driver attempted to get the woman's attention by honking repeatedly as they pulled up alongside her. The woman, reported as being in her early 30s, hardly seemed to notice the warnings and carried on with her call. The clip was later posted on social media, where it sparked outrage among viewers. 
It reached WA police as well and they managed to track down the driver. The woman who'd reportedly been talking to her boyfriend when the video was captured was issued a $400 fine accompanied by three demerit points for her reckless conduct behind the wheel. Number two, William Atkinson. 34-year-old William Atkinson asked a friend to drive him to the Best Western Hotel in Somerset, Pennsylvania, on September the 21st of 2021. He'd picked up multiple video calls coming from his wife of three years in which the woman was having relations with another man in a parked car. The Tristan duo allegedly taunted Atkinson during the calls. When the latter arrived at the scene, he became physically violent. Atkinson first struck his wife's lover, who promptly fled, then proceeded to drag her out of the car on the grass behind the vehicle and assault her. The enraged husband allegedly punched and kicked the 32-year-old woman, leaving her with a bloodied nose and mouth as well as severe bruising and marks all over her face. Law enforcement was called to the scene and found the woman crying for help while struggling to breathe. She accused Atkinson of attacking her, but the man only admitted to hitting her with an open hand. He was taken into custody and police recovered one of his blood-soaked shoes from the scene. The 911 caller had reported that Atkinson was actively kicking his wife in the face and also claimed to have heard gunshots. Investigators found a 9mm handgun in the van in which Atkinson had traveled, but they didn't find a magazine or rounds inside it, nor at the parking lot. A stun gun and knife were also retrieved from the scene and investigators determined they'd belonged to the woman. She was described by the responding officers as uncooperative and extremely intoxicated. Atkinson was charged with aggravated assault and reckless endangerment and taken to the Somerset County Jail, where he was held on a $30,000 bond. Number 1. Jaden Bird on March the 2nd of 2022, at around 11 a.m., Jaden Bird was dropped off by his Lyft driver and proceeded to walk through a parking lot near Whittier Street and North Market in St. Louis, Missouri. He was on his way to meet his mother, Leslie Bird, but the driver had accidentally dropped him off on the wrong side of the building. Jaden was on a call with Leslie when a car pulled up next to him. Someone inside the vehicle shot at Jaden before speeding off. The teenager's mother heard the gunshots and saw the phone drop to the ground but she'd hoped her son had managed to run away. Someone then accidentally kicked the phone and Leslie was able to see Jaden's head roll and his hands curl up after he'd collapsed on the ground. She alerted the authorities and Jaden was taken to a local hospital with multiple gunshot wounds. Doctors were unable to save the 19-year-old, who died shortly after arriving at the medical facility. No arrests were made in the incident's immediate aftermath as police were unable to identify any suspects. Jaden's mother believed the shooting had been a case of mistaken identity, as the attacker had never tried to rob her son. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get yelled at in front of your colleagues for being 30 seconds late or have your food deliveries always arrive cold? Let us know in the comment section below.